everyone, this is SDZ Gamer, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Spirit of Justice. In this video, we are going to be starting episode 4, Turnabout Storyteller, which is in a very weird spot and a very strange, I don't know, the decision to put this particular case here with Athena as the lead is very bizarre of decision, in my opinion because it has no affiliation to anything that's going on with the rest of this game. And I, while I understand it's more of a filler case, I find it really underwhelming for a case as it is. It feels more like a DLC case, considering there is only a trial portion to this, and that's it. There's not much else to it. I'm going to assume they wanted to do something to include Athena, but to be honest, considering they were promoting this game to be Phoenix Wright and Apollo just eccentric. I find this odd, I'm just having this here. It's not a bad case, per se, but compared to everything else that happens in this game, it's not the most, it's not the greatest case either. And I, in my opinion, I think they took a lot of liberties with the characters, how they are, to make the, uh, the to make the case work. I, I don't know, I feel when I went through this that Simon was a little out of character, Athena was a little out of character, even Yuda felt a little out of character just to, I guess, emphasize how, I, I, I think they were trying to go for how uh, how Athena grows and how other people perceive her, per, per, see, perceive her, I guess, uh, but I don't think it's done very well. I, f again, I feel like this case while it has some strong points, it has some really lackluster moments when it comes to just characters and how they play in this. But maybe I'll have a second opinion on this when I go through this again. Uh, who knows? It's, so we'll just get on with this for the time being, yes? As soon as I figure out... Yes, let's start. Turnabout Storyteller. We're out of a cutscene, aren't we? <sighs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What time is it? It's nine. Ten. <laughs> I love how they have to use like uh, this. Silhouette of a black of a dark man to for to portray who kills people in this now I have no idea who's talking Don't worry, I have an idea Ideas are bad when it comes to murders <laughs> Okay, let's get going. This is not a stylus, but it's a paintbrush. I'll work with it. What the heck? Who brings a defendant to his own trial late? Plus, the request was so last minute, I didn't even have a chance to talk with my client. He's late! He's late! For a very important date! My name is Athena Sykes. Armed with analytic psychology and a full arsenal of legal know-how, I'm a fully competent defender of the Right Anything Agency. Though I wish my client would show up already, the trial's about to start. <laughs> it appears we made it just in time. Where have you been? The trial's about to start, Simon! You needn't get so worked up, Athena. His baldness can wait. There's no way he'd wait for me! And besides, why would I want to start off on the wrong foot with him right out of the gate? Dealing with such matters is part of being a lawyer, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, well, covering for your lateness is not. Hmm, still but a rank amateur, I see. This is Simon Blackwell. He might not look it, but he's actually a prosecutor. And a psychology se a specialist. He and I go way back. As for our shared specialization in psychology, 
We're both disciples of the same person, so to speak. But he's kind of a senior, I guess. But twisted sense of humor or no, I'd wish he stopped treating me like a child all the time. Stop acting like one. <laughs> so, where are Right Dono and Justice Dono? Mr. Right is abroad, and Apollo is helping Trucy with her magic show. Didn't I tell you? They're what? So neither one of them are here, leaving you to take this on alone? Yep! Ye gods. Call Right Dono back. It's not too late. Wow, thanks for the vote of confidence, Blackwell. Oh, no, not too late at all. He would only need to know how to teleport. <laughs> Very well. Then I will settle for justice, Dono. Go grab him by the horns and drag him here. Is Apollo a bull now? Apollo is literally in the middle of a show, Simon. You may not want to admit it, but I've got what it takes to take on this case. Just leave this to me and go watch from the gallery. As your defense derails in spectacular fashion. No, as I win the heck out of this trial. <laughs> Come on, Blackwell. I'll be okay, promise. So wipe that look off your face already, will you? Anyway, I took it I take it the guy behind you is Yes, he's your <laughs> He's asleep again. Hoy Bucky, wake up! Oh, what'd you do that for, Simey? Uh-oh, is this guy drunk? Oh god, he's drunk. You got too much of that grape juice, didn't you? Huh? Who this yellow chickadee? She is your lawyer, such as it were. I'd say she's more green than yellow, however. Lawyer? Oh, she sure doesn't look it, does she? She, like, your fellow apprentice or something? <laughs> Damn, these insults! <laughs> something like that. I've known her longer than I've known you. You could say we're bound to one another. Oh, okay. Well, then, guess I better call Miss Chickadee, then. Oh. Simon? This guy's not only rude, but he's three sheets to the win of his own trial. <laughs> I know we just met, but I'm about ready to give him a piece of my mind. Do as you will. Just save it for after the trial. Miss Chickadee. Don't call me that. Ah. Uh, how'd you do? Simi here's an old friend of mine. I'm the fourth generation head chef of wheat soba. Wet soba. Wet noodle number four, Bucky Wheat. Bucky Wheat. Wet? Wheat? Nice to meet ya. It's nice to meet you too, Mr. Wet. So he can pull himself together when he wants to. Ah, if only the trial wasn't starting in a few minutes. Having been accused of a murder that only occurred yesterday, I'm afraid it's taken a toll on the poor boy. And you happened to be there at the theater where it all happened too, right? They said they found a rack ago storyteller murdered in his dressing room. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention, this is probably the most intensive localization that they've had to do because this is, this case is very rooted to Japanese uh, culture. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, I applaud them for what they, what they attempted to do to make it work, though. Indeed. In That's not my line! The victim, master storyteller Taifu Tonado, was a longtime patron of Wet Soba. Taifu? Typhoon Tornado, right? Master Tornado had been looking after Bucky ever since Wet Noodle Number 3 passed away. I see. So the victim was kind of like a father to the defendant, huh? That stupid old fart. Like a father? Oh, no way. 
He was always dishing my soba. How dare you speak ill of him. Running your mouth like that is why they suspected you of his murder in the first place. Now, pull yourself together. Number three must be rolling in his grave. But, but, Simi! <laughs> the police! None of them believes me. They won't even listen to me. <laughs> oh. It looks like he's still in shock from the whole ordeal. Don't worry, Mr. Wet. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm gonna defend you with everything I've got. You're in good hands now. You mean, do you believe in me, ma'am? Of course. No matter what, I'll believe in you to the very end. Jay, where's Miss Chickadee? Now come on. I need you to shape up, just like those al dente noodles of yours. Ye yes, ma'am. The soba is the fresh... Lord, how much did you drink? Mr. Wet! <sighs> Bucky, you great big pillock. So, uh, how exactly do you know this guy? I used to frequent Wet Soba, and still do, in fact. So I've known him since he was a lad. That's why his father and Master Tornado were always so good to me. I didn't know you liked soba so much, Simon. I wouldn't expect one such as you, who eats meat slapped between slabs of bread, to understand the delicate taste and the subtle textures imparted by buckwheat flour. Hey, that's just rude. But I digress. Hmm. I'm all about flavor and subtlety and stuff. If I let wet soba end like this... I'll never be able to face number three or Master Tornado in the next life. This is some serious business over Soba. Ah, uh, I see. And that's why you came to me. You wanted somebody you could trust. It was never my intention to ask you. Ow, that burn! I hope you guys get used to this because they really give Athena shit about being in experience. Ugh. I'll show him. I'll show him I can handle it just fine. Well, I believe it's just about time. What? But we haven't even properly discussed the case yet. What's the matter? You look nervous, Athena. Don't tell me you're chickadeeing out. Oh my god, Black Quill. I, I'm just trembling with the excitement of battle, that's all. Off gets, let's do this. Come on, Mr. Wet. Or Mr. Wheat, I have- uh, I will look this up later and make sure I correct myself for the later videos. Get up off the floor! We got a case to win! Yes, Miss Chickadee. I'm gonna do my best. <gasps> I was right! I was right! It's wet! Thank fuck! Thank you, phone! Thank you, phone! Yo, two bowls of noodles. Sorry, sir, no can do. Kind of busy at the courthouse. Huh? Oh, they, they hung up. <laughs> You're gonna lose your business, man. <laughs> okay, let's do this. He's not gonna do himself or his case any favors like this, Simon. Maybe we should let him go get some rest somewhere. Let me rest? Ha! <laughs> Maybe if I were a lump of old regular flour dough for udon noodles. But I'm fresh like my soba. You don't... And you don't let soba dough rest. So what about the three freshes? Grind the buckwheat, seeds fresh, cut the dough fresh, and boil the noodles for... <sighs> Maybe you do need to chill out for a bit. He's blacked out. Oh boy, I just knew something like this would happen. Did you really? Simon, what are these three freshes of soba he's talking about? First, buckwheat seeds, or groats, are ground to make buckwheat flour. Then dough made with this flour is cut with a large rectangular knife into noodles. 
And finally, the buckwheat noodles are boiled. Each step is done immediately, one after the other, so that the soba is fresh when eaten. That sounds really hardcore. Oh, so that's what he meant. I wouldn't want him to make me any soba right now, though, that's for sure. Athena, this is no time for idle chatter. You need to get into the courtroom, now. Just remember, as a prosecutor, I will be unable to lend you a <laughs> Sure! Hand. Sure you can't! So don't expect any help from my quarter. See, when characters say like this in these kind of video games, that means they're gonna jump in and help you. There you go, treat me like I'm an incomp- like I'm incompetent again. For your information, I wasn't planning on asking you for help anyway. Ugh, <sighs> just you wait, Simon, I'll show you. You do it, Athena, you do it. Mr. Wright and Apollo may not be here. But that's alright, I can do this on my own. Still feels like a DLC case, though. Ah. This this case gets so much flack from the community, though, just because, you know, of a lot of things. It's unfortunate. It's not a bad case. I say this, but I'm gonna hate it later, I'm sure. Because I'm gonna find out other shit that I didn't find out in the first game or something. Court is now in session for the trial of Bucky Wet. The defense! It's ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is fully prepared, Your Honor. What's this? No prayer this time, Prosecutor Samahi. That is correct, Your Honor. To expedite these proceedings, I completed them beforehand in the lobby. That's nice of you. How very thoughtful of you. By the way, what brings you back to this country? I don't know. I mean, does this guy have jet lag? Ever? Chief Prosecutor Edgeworth himself called on me to handle this case. Where are the other- WHERE'S CLAVIER?! Can I have a Clavier versus Athena or something at least? Come on! Besides, I have a debt to repay. Like, if this is such an out of place case, why don't you just put Clavier here and do something with him? Ugh, I feel so bad for Clavier. And though my opponent is yet a callow thing, I have no qualms with sending her down to hell. <laughs> Harsh. If you have a score to settle, it's with Apollo, not me! But more importantly, I'm not a callow thing. I'm a qualified and capable attorney. Meanwhile, her voice person is not as capable at voicing her declarations. Then what is that yellow attire, if not proof of your immaturity, you small spring chick? Now, cease your shrill chirping. No, oh, no, Prosecutor Sabahi. She is still only a teenager. Please go easy on her. Oh, fuck that shit. Okay, they need to stop with the prodigies in this game. Um, let's be real, they need to stop. Great, now even the judge is giving me the kid treatment. Get used to it, Athena! You're gonna get that in this entire case. Very well. Shall we begin, Your Honor? Hmm, yes, I suppose we should. Now then, Prosecutor Sabahi, please give your opening statement. I'll show them what I can do. They'll be sorry for they underestimated me. Certainly. Let the last rites of the victim commence. The incident is believed to have occurred at around 4 p.m. yesterday, May 12th. At a storyteller's theater called Kurukuru Te. Kuru Kuru Te. Is it like Kuru Kuru Karate? <laughs> The victim was a great master of the tornado school of Rakugo, or comedic storytelling. His name was Typhoon Lo Tornado. Typhoon Tornado. The scene of the murder was the theater's dressing room. It is accessible via the staff entrance hallway and has an inner and outer sliding door. Thank you for that information. The estimated time of death is between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Damn. The cause of death is suffocation, though how the victim suffocated is yet to be determined. The autopsy found nothing unusual in his lungs or stomach, and there is no murder weapon. I will now submit the incident report to the court. Boy, lots of stuff here. 
Investigator Submati, how can you name Mr. Wet as the culprit? When you don't know how the victim was killed, or even with what? While it is true that the weapon and precise method are as yet unknown, the accused is the only one who had the opportunity to commit the murder. I will explain his assertion in further detail as we continue. Ah, oh, I guess this means he has some kind of evidence to present. Now, would the accused care to plea his case? No, he's kind of uh, drunk. Come to think of it, where is the defendant, Miss Sykes? Sorry, Your Honor. But I'm afraid Mr. Wet isn't feeling very well. He's kind of wet behind the ears. I mean, he's resting at the f infirmary. <laughs> Surely it is the lack of a clear conscience that impedes him from facing this court. Great. Starting off on the wrong foot already. Mr. Wet is the head chef of a soba shop frequented by the victim. On the day of the incident, Mr. Wet went to the theater at the victim's request. Taifu Tornado has a con connoisseur of soba, as you can see in these photographs. He was apparently making soba himself in his dressing room that very day. The soba found at the scene is likely the soba he himself made there. Okay, that explains the powder. Liking soba is one thing, but making it in a theater dressing room is a bit much, non? Master Tornado truly had a passion for soba, didn't he? For a man like that to be murdered by a soba chef is simply unthinkable. And yet, the accused had ample motive. For in the victim's safe, we discover the deed to the accused's shop. Mr. Wet was to inherit wet soba when he lost his father recently. However, it's believed the victim stole the shop's deed during the transfer process. The prosecution believes the accused killed the victim in order to get the deed back. A murder over the deed to a shop. That does sound like a plausible motive. So that's what this case is about? I wish Simon had filled me in a little better. But he's a prosecutor. He can't help you. I could have contributed more than just a thousand buckets of cold sweat if he had. Defense. From your demeanor, I gather you know very little about the details of this case. Well, you see... You are dishonoring the soul of the victim by appearing in the courtroom unprepared. <laughs> right and Paul come unprepared all the time! You are an embarrassment to your profession, you putrid egg yolk. Eh? I I'm sorry? Oh, don't apologize for that! Fight him! Paul's a red pepper and now I'm an egg yolk? I've only just started and I've already been demoted from spring check! I am ready to call my witness, Your Honor. Let us listen to the words of one who was present when the crime was, was discovered. Someone who was there when the victim's body was found? Probably Simon, then. Very well! Witness, please take the stand! Yeah, looks like it's Simon. Right, let's do this then. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Simon Blackwell, prosecutor. Where's Taka though? I mean, where is Taka this whole time? But prosecutor Blackwell, you didn't tell me you were going to take the stand. There simply wasn't time. I don't know, you sure talked a lot in the lobby. <laughs> what a shame, Prosecutor Blackwell. Had you shared the damning scene you witnessed beforehand with the defense, we could have moved this trial along and saved the victim's soul that much faster. Damning scene? What in the world did Simon see? Prosecutor Sadmati, was it? Before I give my testimony, there's something I'd like to confirm. By all means. Okay, you know what? The best thing that did come out of this is the bantering between Ayuda and Blackwell. This case involves Rakugo, a very traditional form of Japanese comedic storytelling. Do you have enough knowledge of this art form to handle the case competently? 
Are you implying that I'm not qualified for this case? Not yet. I'm simply trying to ascertain your familiarity with the topic. For now. It is a prosecutor's duty to learn the background of any case he takes on. I did some research on Rakugo last night and have grasped the overall idea of it. <laughs> How much could you possibly grasp in a single night? Rakuko is a form of entertaining storytelling that originated in the land of Japan. In it, the storytelling sits alone on the stage with only a fan and a towel as... And the Rakuko artist tells long, whimsical stories, giving each character a distinct voice. This traditional art was originally invented by monks to make sermons more interesting. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, now you just like told off Blackwell! Are you satisfied? If not, I could explain the 12 types of endings to such stories. Holy shit! Tell you that! <laughs> or shall I perform the famous story of Jengumu Jeng instead? Jugemu. Ugh. It, it appears you have put in a bit of study. A bit? Your acknowledgement is most welcome, Prosecutor Blackwell. I can see why you are known for being quite thorough in your research, Prosecutor. Now, I would love to see you perf perform that story you mentioned, if you don't mind. If that is your honor's request. Jugumu, Jugumu. Your honor, could we please get back to the trial? Oh, right, of course. I nearly forgot. Judge, please. Seriously? Of all the things you want for you to forget. Ahem, <clears throat> now then, back to the case. Prosecutor Blackwell, please tell this court what you witnessed. I'm shaking my head at you, Judge. Please, come on. What Simon saw. I went to the theater yesterday and arrived at approximately 4 p.m. I went straight to Master Tornado's dressing room to say hello. Bucky went straight into the dressing room thereafter, only to come storming out a while later. Master Tornado's junior disciple, Wendo, apparently then entered the room soon after. That's when Wendo discovered Master Tornado's body. Now, wait just a minute there, uh, Prosecutor Blackwell. With testimony like that, you're practically accusing Mr. Wet of the crime! All I can do is state what I saw. I can't help how it appears. But, a qualified and capable attorney, such as you, should be able to dispatch with it, right? Well, yeah, duh! Alright, I guess I better start by getting all the info out of him that I can. Uh, we shall do that in the next video because, I mean, we're, we're cutting it a little short, I know, but I don't want to stop in the middle of the cross-examination, so we'll save that for the next video. Uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you guys then.